So, you know, we, we in Pakistan pray that this does not happen. We have tried our best. We've already talked to Saudi Arabia, Iran, the United States. I spoke to President Trump yesterday, and I told him that this would be a disaster for us if this war starts. Did he agree? He didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can share with us. It will be, it stay in this room. No, he, I'm serious. He didn't say anything. <laughs> but I think he, he under, I think, I think he understood. Because this would be, in my opinion, it will be insanity. Because if just Afghanistan is still not resolved. And, uh, you know, Iran would even be a bigger problem. Mr. Prime Minister, you also underlined coming back to the more domestic uh, opportunities and challenges in your country, uh, this accelerator that we have agreed on, uh, on skills and upskilling and reskilling um, between the World Economic Forum uh, and uh, Pakistan. I think there is a huge potential. I think the youth bulge, the youth of uh, Pakistan is a huge opportunity. How important do you think uh, education is in this context and how do you look at the national curriculum and the madrasas and the importance of teaching world-class math and, and sciences? You know the tragedy of my country because as I said um, I grew up with my country and in the 60s Pakistan was the most exciting thing happening in Asia. It was the fastest growing country uh, we were moving fastest towards industrialization our universities I think but your GDP was even higher than India's per capita, wasn't uh, it? It's certainly, our, uh, our, in, uh, our industrial production was more than the four Asian tigers put together, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, and uh, Philippines. So it was, you know, the fastest growing country. And we lost our way. One was ill-conceived nationalization, which stunted this, uh, this industrial growth. We could have... Uh, um, you know, done what China did. They created wealth and then they used the wealth to lift the bottom uh, tier of the uh, population. But just because the rich got richer, it didn't mean that we should have stopped, in, uh, you know, this in industrialization by nationalization. We should have just had a more equitable growth. But that was one way, one went, where we went wrong. And secondly, you know, we just did not pay enough attention to our education system. So we developed this three-tier education system, English medium for an elite. Uh, then there was Urdu medium, which was for the uh, uh, masses. And then there was Dini Madrasas, three parallel systems going. So what my government is now trying to do is to synthesize the system, get the core issue, the core syllabus should be for the same for everyone and uh, you know give everyone equal opportunities the education system actually uh, created uh, 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 the differences economic differences between people because people could not go on to the upper uh, the higher class because uh, they did not were not equipped by the education system so this is what we are trying to do the uh, change the the flaws of education system by synthesizing it Thank you all very much, Prime Minister. I see the time is out. I would have liked to continue this uh, conversation. I think we're all um, very impressed uh, with the reform agenda. We're seeing economic growth is being back. We see the foreign direct investments uh, are there. So thank you for sharing this uh, with the community. Well, economic growth is still coming, hopefully this year. Uh, the economy is stabilized. The growth is the second thing. As I said, I've, I've never been uh, insulted so much, not insulted is not the word, but uh, lacerated by the media, the, the way the media has attacked me because of the stabilization program. But this now, 220 is the year we, we want to uh, lift our growth rate and provide jobs to our young people. It has some of the most uh, uh, sacred sites for uh, Hinduism, Sikhism, Sufism and then Buddhism. There's some, uh, the, the center of uh, Buddhist civilization was the Gandhara, which is north of Pakistan. So we have religious tourism. And then the mountain tourism in Pakistan, ha almost half the peaks, over 24,000 uh, feet, are in Pakistan. So it is un untouched as yet, and our 
concentration for providing jobs to people and improving the growth rate is now on tourism. In fact, without us doing anything, tourism has doubled and people are finding it difficult to have hotels or places to stay. So we are now inviting tourism uh, uh, investment in tourist resorts. So I, I'm, maybe I'm at least one of the few uh, Norwegians that I'm, I'm, maybe I'm at least one of the few uh, Norwegians that have visited up in the Swat Valley. Uh, it's beautiful, and you also have uh, beautiful other places. Uh, I think Swat Valley used to be the honeymoon place, uh, even in uh, Pakistan. Is it no? Also, uh, you see tourism also in these areas where uh, the Pakistani Taliban is used to. Uh, to run and uh, you're not concerned that uh, uh, Pakistani Taliban's can come back and and uh, you're pretty sure that this is on no on on safe footing you see in Pakistan now virtually there's there's no terrorism in Pakistan and I have to pay tribute to our security forces uh, they did uh, such a brilliant job and it was for a while uh, we went through a really difficult period but Thanks to them, there is hardly any terrorism. I mean, you have the odd problem, but you know, that you have anywhere in the world. Problem now is we need peace in Afghanistan and stability. Whatever uh, terrorism now comes into Pakistan every now and then is from Afghanistan. And that's why, uh, that's why this peace process in Afghanistan is very important. The, uh, the quicker Afghanistan settles this peace and stability, it's not just only good from, uh, for Pakistan from uh, the terrorism point of view, but also the connectivity to Central, uh, Central Asia, uh, and which will benefit uh, both Afghanistan and Pakistan. Are you, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, optimistic that there can be a deal between Taliban um, and the government in Kabul? Um, Americans are very much uh, involved in this. Uh, you're also contributing. Um, is, is it possible this year? And do you think Taliban will also engage in a deal that will respect uh, the rights of girls' education, uh, women, and, and those areas where there have been progress uh, in Afghanistan? Well, the, the, the first thing is that there, there has to be peace. And that could only happen if uh, Taliban and the Afghan government they sit together and there's a political settlement. That has to be the first step. Uh, just my view, I, I do not think that, you know, the saying uh, that you only cross the river once. What was in 2001 is not going to be now the case uh, if and when Taliban and the Afghan government come together because so much has happened since then. Uh, so I think uh, it would be a completely different scenario. But the most important thing right now, and it's not going to be easy, but it is the only option that the Taliban and the Afghan government sit together. Whenever that happens, uh, it, it will have turbulence, but it is the only way forward. There is, the, the, there, is, there is not, and there never was, a military solution in Afghanistan. Mr. Prime Minister, um, as you also alluded to and mentioned, um, you have uh, also initiated um, initiatives uh, to have uh, Saudis and Iranians uh, de-escalating and trying to establish dialogues. You are able, as a nation, to have um, pretty good relations, both Iran, Saudi Arabia, uh, UAE, and other um, Gulf states. If you look at uh, the escalation that we have seen lately, some people even talk about uh, this Middle East being at an inflection point. Um, and there is no way back, and there are those that are more optimistic that there will be uh, a de-escalation. Um, you will continue uh, to contribute in that process, and how do you see that unfolding um, in the year to come uh, after Americans killed General Soleimani, and etc.? Is U.S. deterrence back in the region? Are you short-term, medium-term optimistic on uh, de-escalation or is this something that really keeps you up at night? Look, let me just first of all make a statement. Uh, I do not understand why countries go to resolve the differences through military conflicts. 
because whenever, and this is just in our lifetime we've seen this, the moment you start a military conflict, you don't know where it is going to go.